One of the most inspiring men I ever met was Ray Lynch, an evangelist who, at the time I met him, was living at a retirement home in California. I was leading a team of young evangelists in the area, and we had the opportunity of hearing some of the thrilling stories he had to tell. Let me read to you a well-known statement from the end of the Gospel by Matthew, and you'll see why in a moment. The Lord Jesus said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Ray Lynch, as we read on the back of the book, was a public relations director at Whittier College in California. The town of Whittier had been started by Quakers, friends, uh, many, many years ago, and it was the famous home of the Nixon family. Richard Nixon, the president, came from Whittier. Well, Ray Lynch had a very painful experience in marriage. His wife left him with the two children and really completely cut herself off from him. He became so distressed about this. He was a Sunday school teacher at the Lutheran Church. He'd grown up in that environment, but never had personally put his trust in the Lord Jesus. Didn't know what it was to rest in the finished work of Christ. Ray was very discouraged, and he was traveling along Whittier Avenue in the downtown in the city, and came to Nixon's restaurant. Richard Nixon's brother owned a restaurant there, and the Christian Businessmen's Committee was having a lunch meeting. And a friend of his at work had suggested that seeing he was so discouraged, he might find some help and encouragement if he went there for lunch. On this particular journey, he had already planned to go and, if necessary, take his wife and children by force up to a cabin in the mountains and keep them there until she agreed to live with him. She had been separated from him for about two years at this point. And he thought, well, I need a good lunch to give me the energy to go through with this. And he had so fixated on this, he, he really wasn't thinking clearly. So he went in and they announced that the speaker who had been scheduled to be there had not been able to make it. And so they were just going to go around the table and certain people were going to give their personal testimonies. They came to Ray and he thought he ought to say something. And so he got up and began to talk about his religious activities. And, and then suddenly he broke down weeping and said, actually, my life is in ruins. I was planning on going up and taking my wife by force and holding her up at a cabin in the mountains until she agreed to live with me. And, and he said, I, I, just, I just don't know where to turn. I wish someone would pray for me. And there happened to be a man right beside him who immediately stood up, put his hands on Ray and began to pray for him and specifically to pray that he would put his trust in the Lord Jesus. And as the man prayed, he wept. He wept for Ray's broken marriage. And Ray thought to himself, in these last two years, counselors, lawyers, ministers, all kinds of people have worked with me on my marriage. Not one of them has wept for me. And he was deeply touched by this. And afterwards, as he was leaving, another gentleman came to him and offered him a little booklet, a little gospel tract, written by John R. Rice, called What Must I Do to Be Saved? He stuck it in his pocket, and he went out the door. Of course, uh, he'd been talked out of this crazy plan that he had. And a couple of days later, he was sitting in his office at the college. The students had all gone home for Christmas. He was sadly thinking about being alone at Christmas and wondering if he could make connection maybe with someone he had met recently, and uh, some of it not altogether wholesome. And this message came to his heart, how long are you going to keep running, Ray? And he just kind of pushed his hand into his pocket and he felt that gospel tract and he pulled it out and he began to read it. And at first uh, he, he wasn't terribly impressed. It seemed like everything he was reading, he'd already heard at the Lutheran church about us being sinners and about 
Jesus coming into the world as virgin born and so on, going to the cross. But then all of a sudden, as he saw these words that the Lord Jesus had gone to Calvary to take our sin upon himself so that we would never have to face the judgment for it, that all our sin could be taken away, and that the Lord Jesus had chosen to be our lawyer, our advocate, and he'd never lost a case that he would proclaim our standing before God against all accusations because he had paid in full for all our sins. And at the end, there was a little place to sign if he had chosen to receive Christ as his personal Savior. He clipped the little response off the bottom, put it in an envelope, and he mailed it to the publisher but also on the back of the little letter of the tract, this man had written his phone number. He wasn't quite sure whether he should call the man or not. He wondered if anything really had happened, but he said, the next morning when I woke up, it was like the sky was bluer and the grass was greener, and I felt so happy, and I wondered what it was. My situation hadn't really changed. And yet something within, I felt, had changed. And so he said, I, shortly thereafter, I called this man and asked if he would explain to me what had happened to me. And so began this wonderful journey. His wife never came back to him, cut the children off, and wouldn't allow him any contact with them. But Ray, convicted by this verse, felt that perhaps the Lord was calling him to visit every country in the world with the gospel. When I met him, he had visited 217 countries around the world. He had just come back. He had gone to East Timor after it was separated off, and then he had gone to the broken bits of Yugoslavia and visited every one of them with the gospel. Not just simply stopping here and there, but methodically feeling the Spirit of God led him go from place to place, preaching the gospel, and no doubt in heaven someday he will meet people who had been saved through his witness in those many countries around the world. So this book tells the story of Ray's travels through the world, how God opened doors, how he made provision. Ray never let his needs be known. He just looked to the Lord to trust the Lord for his finances, for visas, for opportunities, open doors. Amazing stories of his getting into Muslim countries, into the communist countries, into North Vietnam, into North Korea with the gospel. Just a little reminder again, as he said to us, God is the God that opens doors and nobody shuts them. So the Lord may encourage our hearts to pray for those all around the world who are seeking to fulfill this responsibility to preach the gospel to every nation because God loved the world and he loves every sinner in it. So be encouraged, keep praying, and as you have opportunity, perhaps through international students, perhaps through neighbors who have come from other parts of the world, we can all have a hand in this wonderful commission to reach out to the world with the love of God and the story of the finished work of Christ and salvation through him.